This is a description of our work on reset-free reinforcement learning by a multitask learner. Reinforcement learning is a very powerful tool in order to learn robotic behaviors in the real world. So here we see a number of instantiations of reinforcement learning for learning behaviors like object striking, door opening, and in-hand manipulation by direct training in the real environment. However, if we pull the curtain back on these types of setups, we see that they're actually far from this promise of plug and play reinforcement learning. In the first setup, a human is constantly required in order to provide resets for the object to try the task over and over again. In the second setup, a specialized servo reset mechanism is required in order to close the door after every opening attempt. And in the third setup, you require a specialized funnel mechanism and a scripted arm to keep putting the balls back in the hand to keep attempting in-hand manipulation. In fact, most of our current real-world reinforcement learning setups require pretty careful instrumentation or intervention to actually operate. And a lot of this instrumentation and intervention is actually required in order to provide episodic resets for tasks to try things over and over again. If we want scalable reinforcement learning methods in the real world, we need to have them operate reset free. They need to be able to set up their own practice problems. So let's say we had a robot operating in the kitchen trying to put the kettle into the sink as shown here. In the first episode, it tried to put the kettle in the sink and it was successful. Now in the second episode, we need the agent to be able to set up its own practice problem to try things over and over again. Now actually building reset-free reinforcement learning methods can be quite challenging in the single task setting because exploration can be quite hard. However, we're rarely in the single task setting. We usually want to solve multiple different tasks together. So for instance, you have a robot in a kitchen, you don't want to just put the kettle into the sink, but you might also want to learn the tasks of opening the cabinet, picking up the kettle, closing the cabinet, picking up objects off the floor, and so on. The question becomes, can reset-free reinforcement learning actually be easier when you have multiple different tasks? So the key idea we're going to leverage in this work is that when you're learning multiple different tasks together, some tasks can automatically provide resets for other tasks. So let's say you're in the kitchen environment, you're trying to put the kettle into the sink. You try to put the kettle in the sink and maybe you drop the kettle on the floor. Now, if you try and learn the task of picking up the kettle and putting it on the counter in sequence, it automatically provides a reset for the task of putting the kettle into the sink. So just by learning different tasks appropriately in sequence, they can provide resets for each other. Now we instantiated this concretely in the context of dexterous manipulation problems. So we considered a 22 degree of freedom system where you have an arm and hand system with a 16 degree of freedom hand and a six degree of freedom arm. Now the goal in the first task is to do in-hand manipulation. You want to take this three-pronged object and rotate it to a particular angle in the palm of the hand. A successful outcome is shown here on the right. Now given this type of system, when we train it reset free, it can be quite challenging. Initially, we see exploration is in the palm, but it very quickly falls out of the palm onto the floor, and then it becomes quick to, quickly hard to resume training. However, we're not going to consider learning a single task, but we might want to learn many different tasks together. For instance, we want to learn the tasks of recentering, picking up, flipping over, and in-hand reorientation, where some tasks can reset other tasks. Let's look at how a training run of this would proceed. So let's say we consider starting by trying to lift the object off the ground. And let's say this is unsuccessful. We can then try doing a recentering to put it in a position where we can try lifting again. Now, once we've tried lifting the object again, we can see if it's successful, then we can try doing flipping upwards. And if flipping upwards is success successful, we can then try doing in-hand manipulation in the palm. Now, when the object falls out of the hand, we can then recenter and try again. So the overall training procedure for something like this looks something as follows. The object starts off in the palm, but it quickly falls out. And then we spend a long time trying to figure out how to recenter the object in the middle of the arena so that we can then try doing lifting. In around 20 hours, we can successfully recenter the object in the middle of the arena. After this, we then practice how to do lifting with resets coming from the recentering policies. Once lifting is successfully mastered, we can then learn how to do flipping in the palm. And once we've been able to flip the object over, we can practice in-hand manipulation. And after around 65 hours, we can actually learn how to successfully put the object in the palm and do in-hand manipulation. The final learned behavior can then look something like this. The object is able to be successfully picked up, flipped over, and then there's fine-grained finger manipulation and finger gating to get it into a particular position and orientation.
We next consider a second task, which involves pipe insertion. Now the goal here is to pick up the cylindrical pipe object and insert it into a hose attachment in the wall. The example of a successful outcome is shown here on the right. Now here we might want to learn many different tasks like recentering, picking up, insertion into the hose attachment, and removal from the hose attachment. We're trying to learn all of these different tasks together with some providing resets for others. Now the overall training procedure looks something like this. Initially, we don't really know how to pick up the object or reposition it, so we spend a lot of time trying to reposition the object in the middle of the arena. After around six hours, we can recenter it, and then this starts to provide resets for lifting the object. Now, once the object can be successfully lifted, we can then try to practice how to actually insert it into the hose attachment. Once it's been inserted, we can then practice doing removal, and this whole process can repeat so we can keep getting better at all of the tasks. After around 25 hours, we can become successful at doing all of the different tasks and get final behavior that looks something like this. You can actually pick up the object successfully and insert it into a particular attachment in the wall. A closer look at this behavior yields something like this. We can actually successfully reposition the object. We can then try picking it up. And then we can try inserting it into a particular position in the wall. So it's actually successfully inserted into the hose attachment. And then after it's been attached, we can then remove it and continue training. This can also be applied to several tasks in simulation, like light bulb insertion and basketball dunking. So here, tasks like reposition and reorient provide resets for tasks like pickup, which subsequently provide resets for tasks like insertion and dunking, and all of these tasks are being learned together. The takeaway is here are that reset-free reinforcement learning can be challenging in the single task setting but learning multiple different tasks together can make this process a lot easier. So just by appropriately sequencing tasks one after the other, they can start to provide resets for each other.